Brilliant. So I'll make a, a start. My name is Ben Royal. I'm one of the directors and registered manager of the VZ Private Hospital. And we arranged the, the, the meeting today, uh, this evening, to um, give people an oversight of how to, to develop and um, grow uh, a healthy private practice. Um, we have, in terms of an agenda, um, Chris Rogers, uh, who, who will be running his presentation on um, key steps um, of a healthy private practice. And we also have um, Megan Wilson from Doctify to discussing the benefits of uh, verified review platforms and how that links in to, to growing your profile. We'll also have some time for some questions and answers. Um, the meeting will be recorded so we can share the recording afterwards and uh, uh, with the group. Um, and, and if you have any questions about, um, you know, opportunities with the team at the, the VZ or in the West Midlands at all, I'm, I'll be happy to answer those either at the end or, or, or sort of offline. Uh, so we'll start the evening with Chris. Chris, thank you very much for, for, for joining the, the, the conversation this evening and over to you. Brilliant. Thanks very much for having me. Um, I'll just uh, quickly try and share my screen. OK, does that look OK? Perfect. Fantastic. OK. Well, yeah, so thanks. Uh, thanks for having me uh, this evening. Um, just as a very quick introduction to me. Um, so I'm the founder of Private Practice Surgery. Uh, it's a business and marketing membership for consultants in private practice. So we provide uh, courses, resources, quick win guides, social media template posts, PR opportunities, monthly Q&A, like all sorts of bits and pieces to help you grow a healthy private practice. Um, I like to think of it as really Amazon Prime for your private practice as there's just tons of benefits you get with membership. Um, I should also say that I've got some free resources at my site, uh, healthyprivatepractice.co.uk, such as articles, downloads and, and a Facebook group. So please do feel free to, to check those out if you want to. Um, I say that really just to you know give you that bit of background as to who I am and why I'm talking to you today. So, um, so one of the the main things that we offer um, in membership is my signature program, the Marketing Essentials Pathway. Um, it's a collection of eight individual courses that make up what I think are the foundations of a healthy private practice. So today I thought I'd run through a few of those foundations. And I say that just because we're a bit limited on time. We've also got Doctify with us to, to cover reviews. Um, but I, I think these stages um, are really important because in my experience, even the most established consultants can benefit from looking at their private practice through this lens. Because at the end of the day, you went to medical school, not business school, and you trained to be a doctor and not a marketer. So um, not all of this would have been immediately obvious to you at the time. So uh, as we go through, I've picked out some uh, 12, 20 odd top tips that I'll share with you as we go through. So let's get started. Uh, so one of the first things we look at in stage one is around mindset. And there are so many things to, to think about here. Um, your relationship with money and your feelings about money in, in healthcare is often a major one. So as patients, we're very lucky to have a healthcare system where you never have to talk to us about the cost of our care and the treatment. Um, so suddenly thinking about how much you'll charge for appointments and treatment and talking about costs with your patients, it can feel a little sort of slimy and awkward for consultants who are new to private practice. So my first tip here really is to reframe what it is that you're offering. Uh, it's not really the healthcare or the treatment that they're buying, it's the faster access, the private facilities, the peace of mind, uh, and the guarantee of seeing a consultant. And by doing this, it frees you from that sort of awkward feeling about exchanging money for healthcare and allows you to focus more on the service and the experience uh, you're offering your patients. And that's a really great mindset for running a business, which is, of course, what you're now doing. And on this subject of money, the, the next top tip really is to sort of separate yourself from that money side of things. So, you know, ask a medical secretary to, to handle pricing and um, communicating that with, with that information with patients and use the hospital booking teams too. I'm sure they'll be very happy to talk pricing with patients. And that means you can focus on doing what you do best, which is looking after your patients. Um, and that segues quite nicely into the next one, really. So, you know, I'd sort of like you to all recognise that 
as the business owner, you are responsible for all the aspects of your business and you need to know an awful lot of things. But it doesn't mean you have to do all of those things. You can outsource them and work with the people around you. And, and talking of money specifically, um, you know, we can you can further distance yourself from the money conversation and the money side of things by outsourcing your billing and invoicing to specialist collections companies, for example. Uh, in fact, it is something that I recommend you do, um, and it allows you and your medsec to focus on providing that great customer service. Um, please do feel free to check out my supplier directory on the Healthy Private Practice website if you need help finding a supplier for billing or for anything else. So. As I've touched on already, a big thing I always try to get across to consultants in private practice is that you are now running a business. And that's a very different mindset to turning up to work and the patients are queuing up around the corner and you don't have to think about secretarial and admin support, practice management software, financial accounts, and everything else that comes with running a business. That may seem like I'm sort of stating the obvious, but you know, I do see a lot of consultants essentially running their private practice like it's just another NHS shift, um, like it's just another job. And that's fine to do if, if, if that's what they want to do, um, of course, but they probably won't make it the financial success it could be. And perhaps more importantly, like, where's, where's the fun in that? Um, you get all the downside of running a business, all the admin and bureaucracy, but not so much of the upside. So my next top tip really is to exactly that recognize that you are running a business and that you're responsible for all that that entails but embrace it uh, yes it brings responsibilities and obligations such as preparing accounts and adhering to other legal requirements which can be quite dull but running a business also brings excitement and opportunity and financial freedom and and it can be thrilling and, uh, and a great way to take charge of your future i'm sure i'm preaching to the choir here so you know, I just wanted to say it all the same, just in case there's a, there's a penny drop moment for, for someone. So mixing it up now. So in stage one, we also talk about patient personas and I walk members through creating their own. So a patient persona is, is a customer or, or a market, sorry, a patient persona or customer or marketing persona is a fictional generalized representation of an ideal customer. And, and I absolutely recommend that you create one for your patients and maybe even for your GPs and referrers. You can even give them names. Like this is just a brief one to give you an idea, but let's say you're a foot and ankle surgeon and you've got patient Jane. She's a runner with bad ankles. She's a, a member of a running club. She competes in organized runs regularly. She's in her forties and her kids are a bit older, but they're still at home. She organizes her family, makes the decisions about her family's healthcare. Now, I can almost guarantee that some of you might be rolling your eyes internally at me, uh, thinking that it's all a bit fluffy and you just don't have time for things like this. But trust me, like, you will have more chance of success uh, of a successful business if you take the time, if you really take the time to think about who your customers are, who your patients are, how you can reach them, what their challenges are, um, and how you can help them ab above just treating them and their condition. Um, and it has practical applications too. So from a business and marketing perspective, it will help you define your proposition or your service offering because you're creating it for Jane and not a generalized patient population. It might seem counterintuitive to present yourself as just for Jane, but you'll be much more likely to achieve business success if you do, rather than trying to appeal to everybody because what happens is you end up appealing to nobody. Most consultants and business owners in all industries, to be fair, they, they worry they'll, they'll lose and they'll, they'll miss out on the non-Jane, but it never actually ends up working like that. As another example, when you have a patient persona, it makes the task of writing your profile or your biography a bit easier too, and it certainly helps you write one that's more effective. So the next top tip really is to write your biography for Jane or whoever your, your patient persona is not for an un unidentifiable general mass patient population. Because instead of a generalized CV style bio that you naturally default to, because you know you don't know who you're writing for, you don't know who's reading it, um, or who you want to be reading it. When you write one and you're writing it with Jane in mind, suddenly it becomes easier and you can talk directly to her. 
and and even have a more relaxed conversational tone when you're in in your written profile and you can even talk to her in the first person um so you can say things like as long as these are true of course but you can say things like as a keen runner myself i like treating other runners or i've helped runners get back to competing um, from following up with with runners several months after their treatment i've got an insight into what works best or i partner with great sports physios um to to give real specialist care for runners you see the type of thing that i'm saying like but that still sounds fantastic to me as a non-runner and i'm still going to prefer that consultant over sort of more generic lines like i have extensive experience in foot and ankle surgery you can still say those things of course but sort of those those extra specific details um, that brings your profile to life really and it makes it sound engaging and interesting and it shows how you've sort of tweaks a proposition or your service to, to fit a particular you know particular person um, it's added a bit of story uh, to your journey on how you've become the best you know consultant for for Jane right now and and you could even say it shows an above average interest in your patients because you want to get those details right for them <clears throat> excuse me now I know that you're all very interested in your patients and their outcomes and you do really care about them but not many of you will communicate that or show that through your written profiles. So, so tip number nine really is to put a lot of effort into your bio and, and even consider working with a writer to craft the perfect profile. In fact, going straight into to tip 10, uh, if you need convincing about the importance of your written web profiles, please do check out my uh, video on YouTube, uh, the underappreciated power of the hospital profile and how to get the most out of them. Um, in it, I highlight research from, from which that shows that the overwhelming factor when making a decision about private healthcare is you, the consultant. So how do they know who to choose? Well, they do their research by reading your profiles. And then when you look up the visitor website visitor numbers for things like Booper Finder and other insurer directories, hospital group websites, like their traffic is huge. Like we're literally talking millions of people. And that's free marketing for you, these profiles on prime online real estate. Um, so what, really what I'd love you to do is just take advantage of that more than most other consultants do and have a really, really great written profile. OK, so that's that stage is um, one and two of my marketing essentials pathway, the launch pad and creating the perfect profile. Let's now look at stage three, which is all about insurers. So. My first tip here actually is about registering with the PPR, the Private Practice Register. As I'm sure you know, it's run by Health Code, the invoice processing organisation. Um, it will save you loads of time in managing your business relationships with insurers and hospitals. Every organisation needs ongoing information from you, usually for maintaining recognition with the insurers or maintaining practicing privileges. Uh, uh, you, you know all this, but you'll be sharing a lot of the same information with all of them, like your medical indemnity insurance certificates, for example. But rather than send it out 20 times, you can upload it to the PPR once and you can grant access to it to everyone who needs it. But that's not all. That's not the main reason why I'd like you to sort of keep up to date with the PPR. So something really big is coming from, from Health Code. As I'm sure you know too, the private healthcare sector really lags behind other industries when it comes to managing bookings. So, for example, thousands of travel agents can sell the same seat on a plane, but technology means that it doesn't actually get sold thousands of times. This doesn't happen in our sector, like your medsec, insurers, online booking, a hospital, they could all sell the same slot to see you and then just cause your medsec a huge headache in trying to sort it all out. You might also have to use several diaries across the week, like one for here, maybe for another one, another clinic down the road. These are the challenges that Health Code are trying to solve with a soon to be released product called ICE. But it will work from your profile on the PPR. So I really recommend you gotta get ahead of the game and ensure your PPR profile is, is ready and well maintained and up to date uh, so that there won't be quite as much work for you to do when, when ICE comes along. No, no, no. Okay, so let's talk more directly about insurers. So whether we like it or not, 
we know that insurers are increasingly controlling which consultants their members or their customers end up seeing. And these decisions aren't by accident. And in fact, they're made very carefully. Insurers use lots of data points to decide whether you'll get referrals from them. From more obvious ones like being fee assured or having an average length of stay per procedure to less obvious ones like how flexible you are to work with and in the case of Bupa and Vitality, the strength of your online presence on their online directory. I can't help you with your average length of stay, of course, but I can help you with online directories. And as I'm sure you know, Bupa Finder is the biggest and most established directory. Um, if you do work with them, then let's make sure that you tick all the boxes and give their Finder tool every reason to show your profile in the search results. So, the top tip there then is to go to finder.bupa.co.uk and search for finder demonstration in the specialist name field. And then really use this profile as the benchmark for your profile. So compare yours with this one side by side and wherever the demonstration profile has some content, make sure your profile does too. I could probably include a hundred sub tips under this Bupa Finder tip, like verifying your profile annually or, or whenever they ask you to and have a recent photo um, and use the same one across all of your profiles, actually, if you can, because it's about making you recognisable. Um, but, but for the sake of brevity, um, essentially, all you need to do really is to just to make your, your profile as complete as possible. Uh, fill in all the fields and the algorithm behind the search engine will favour you. Uh, but of course, your profile will also be more engaging for potential patients too. OK, so let's uh, quickly move on to hospitals, which uh, I cover in stage four. Uh, and I want to ask you a question, really. Um, so do you think the hospital inquiry or booking teams know your practice well enough for you to confidently book a patient into your clinic? I think it's easy to assume that they have been fully briefed as to your special interests when you joined, but that doesn't always happen. And so just try and put yourself in their shoes for a second. They have a patient on the phone, they're looking at consultant diaries, but they know that Mr. Reflux sees patients with gourd. They think that you might do too. They're under time pressure, the patient is waiting. What do they do? The human nature says that they'll book the patient in to see Mr. Reflux. So what's the fix? Well, it's it's a really simple chat every few months. Um, just have a quick catch up with, with the teams and, and bring some biscuits. Uh, that's always a good thing. Um, don't go in all gun guns blazing, of course, but just sort of gently remind them that who you'd like to who you'd like to see in clinic. Um, yeah, so it's as simple as that. Help them be the best representative of you that they can, um, because they're an extension of your unofficial sales team, really. So they need to know your practice really well. And that's an example of my next tip, really. Um, think of the hospital teams as an extension of your own team. Obviously, they're not your staff, so you can't treat them like they are. Um, and they'll have lots of other consultants wanting a piece of, piece of them too. So, so do remember that. But, but everyone at the hospital wants you to do well at the hospital. So if you can work together to achieve that outcome, then it's, it's a win for everyone. So I'm talking if you know marketing or business development managers, GP liaison, patient inquiry team, self pay team, whoever it is, it will it will pay to have a really great working relationship with them. Um, and as I said, if you all pull together in the same direction, i.e. your mutual success, then then it's a win win. Um, okay, so stage five for me is uh, is all about GP and allied health professional referrals. Um, we spend a lot of time talking about how to create CPD education and well, CPD education that gets you more referrals. Um, I'm a big fan of GP and AHP education, so please do take up every education opportunity you can. Um, if you do it well, then you'll become the go to their go to consultant for your specialty and they'll essentially be your field sales team on the ground too, referring patients into you. I know many of you may have tried it before and perhaps felt that it didn't work or maybe even feel more strongly that it was a waste of your time. But my number one tip here really is that please don't do one session and, and expect instant results. Uh, and if you don't immediately get referrals, just you know, don't dismiss it as something you shouldn't do. 
And that's the same with any marketing activity, really. Like, you can't do one press release and expect to be in every newspaper and, and be famous. And you can't do one advert and have the brand of Apple. Um, building a business and a reputation or a brand takes time and most importantly, consistency. So looking more specifically at primary care education, um, and, and I hope I don't sound patronizing here, I don't, don't mean to, but uh, you know, I'm sure you already know this, but, but really consider who the audience is when, when writing your educational talks. I've seen consultants talk about sort of new surgical techniques or new technology or robots or lasers that they use in, to treat patients in their secondary care setting. But to put it bluntly, the GPs and other primary care professionals just don't really care about that. Um, and why would they when they're rushed off their feet trying to treat patients in primary care? So work out how you can be genuinely helpful to them in their role in primary care. So can you help them diagnose something tricky? Um, how can you, you know, can you show them how they can manage a certain condition in your specialty? Can you enlighten them what the care pathways are when it when it needs escalating to secondary care or or when they should refer to a consultant like you? It's this type of information that is really useful and will help you stand out to them uh, as referrers in primary care. So <laughs> I sort of have misjudged mis uh, this a little bit here, Ben. Um, that's pretty much all, uh, all I was going to go through today. Um, I thought that was going to take me a bit longer to go through. Maybe I'm, I'm speaking rather quickly. Um, but yeah, so thank you very much for uh, for, for listening. I, I know I said an awful lot there, probably in a short amount of time. And I think some of it, or maybe even a lot of it, like you, you already know. But I really hope that there was at least one or two uh, nuggets or things in there that you can take away. Um, I'm more than happy to take any questions, or if you'd rather ask me directly, then please get in touch via LinkedIn or by by emailing me on uh, Chris at healthyprivatepractice.co.uk. No, that's 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 brilliant. Thank you ever so much for your your time. I'll open up to to questions in a moment. I was just going to ask you um, um, uh, one particularly from 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 myself. So I I mean a lot of the points there were around our secondary care colleagues, so a, a sort of um, very very sort of well averse with uh, private practice, but private GPs and an ever increasing area now, would you would you agree that the the vast majority of the points still apply um and and the the, the sort of uh, mentality and and mindset that people um re require to develop a healthy um private gp or private primary care service it's still it's 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 still relevant and uh... yeah absolutely it would. yes yeah sorry i my my background and membership is, is generally pitched towards secondary care consultants but yeah you're absolutely right um yeah absolutely right at the end of the day it's about having a good web presence it's about have, you know really thinking about your your patient and what their experience is um you know there's so many like online gp appointments now but actually there's a really big cohort of people who just want to see someone face to face and they want to come into the clinic and see someone and it's just really thinking about yeah who who your sort of your patient persona is who you want to see um, the types of patients you want to see and then how can you really sort of yeah come up with a proposition and offering that's really going to appeal to them and you briefly touched um touched upon your um sort of resource around your directory of supporting mm -hmm. services which is is really really useful for uh, anyone with a, a sort of ambition or a sort of desire to try and explore more about private practice. Could you give just a, a very brief overview of of the types of supporting services that are kind of referenced in 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 that? Is that okay? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, so I can actually, um, I'll just bring it up on screen and show you. Okay, can you see that? So yeah, so this is the Healthy Private Practice site. So uh, as I scroll down, I've tried to sort of um, break it down into uh, the different categories. So whether you're you're planning your private practice, you, you're launching, or you're in the early stages of it, or you're a bit more established and um, 
you know you, you want to really grow your practice so that, that changes the different content that comes down here and there's also different sort of um the free freebies and downloads that you can you can get access to down here as well so um we've got um and I, I must admit i'm quite proud of this it's a it's a roadmap checklist that we've created so all the different tasks and things that you need to do when setting up in private practice so um yeah if you'd like a copy of that it's free to download um then if you wanted to get into um practice management systems then absolutely you can um download a, a um a practice management um com comparison charts that i've put together uh, and then again if you're more established but well, not necessarily more established actually but we've got a, a, an excel dashboard so you can add in lots of your your information about your practice and you get some nice little graphs and charts and things to sort of present that um in a way that's hopefully uh, really helpful and gives you some insight and again helps you make decisions that are uh, best for your practice um but in terms of the directory you can uh, you come up to here um, or you can just type in directory at healthy private practice or UK and we've got um, so it's, it's a relatively new directory so not every single one of these have got um, got listings in them yet but uh, it's it's certainly growing uh, so we've got everybody from yeah accountants clinical software financial advisors medical billing uh, practice management um, medical secretary companies all sorts of pieces in there you know that's 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 really useful and thank you for that and thank you for your time uh, just before we move on did did anyone else have any questions for chris at all okay perfect i'll take that as a as a no thank you ever so much must chris have, must have covered everything <laughs> <laughs> okay and uh, so i'll hand over then to the team from doctify um, to 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 start their presentation. Thank you. Hello, <laughs> hi. Um, so I'll just introduce myself um, at first. So hi, I'm Megan. Everyone that's on the call. Um, I'm the account manager for the the BZ Private Hospital. So we have a partnership currently um, with the facility and Dr. Fi, where we're helping to collect reviews. Um, it also kind of means you guys are connected to the um, facility are organically collecting reviews um, as you have a presence and, and you're linked as well. Um, but I've got my colleague James, who's also joined today, who's going to run through a presentation to basically um, give you an overview of, of how um, you can benefit from Dr. Fires as consultants um, and see if you're kind of interested in, in joining us as well. So I'll, I'll hand over to, to James. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much, Megan, for that, uh, that introduction. Um, can everyone see my screen just out of interest? Oh, perfect. I'm not used to Teams, so uh, apologies in advance for any technical glitches. So <clears throat> Megan's given a bit of an introduction to herself. Um, so I run the sales team at Doctify. You've probably heard from one or two of my colleagues in the in the past. Um, so if you have any issues, you can kind of come to me. Um, so I've set a bit of an agenda for us, give you a bit of an introduction to Doctify, um, what we're about, where we've come from, why we exist. Um, Give you a bit of a run through as to the reasons why consultants typically choose to work with us um run you through the logistics of, of how it works what the day-to-day -day looks like and then also then just look at the benefits of of collecting reviews and and really how that helps consultants to to grow their private practice and and that's really the the crux of of why so many consultants use us it's not necessarily why we started or what the overall mission of doctify is but it is a, a reason why um a lot of consultants tend to use us so just to give you a bit of background on doctify uh founded in 2015 by two orthopedic surgeons um both heavily involved in the business both heavily involved in um and obviously have a lot of contacts within the uh within the medical realm so they were orthopedic surgeons by by trade, um, we work with 25,000 plus hospitals, clinics and, um, and individual specialists um, and consultants as well. We've got nearly half a million pieces of patient feedback on the platform um, already. And, and what we're seeing is that number is just increasing exponentially year after year. So really excited to see that number kind of continually grow. We're really fortunate. We've got five million patients viewing our platform every single year. 
Um, and again, we expect that to uh, to grow. We're in six different markets, uh, the UK, Ireland, Spain. Not sure how my maths has worked there because that's uh, that's seven. But um, yeah, so we're 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 world worldwide and, and hoping to kind of move uh, across the Atlantic in the uh, in the in the coming year. But the, really, the majority of what we do is is in the UK. We're very much startups in uh, in those other markets. So I'll be honest, we work with a lot of, of hospital groups. Um, I've mentioned the 9,000 consultants, but hopefully this just gives you a bit of a picture as to how much um, or how many hospital groups that, that we are we are working with and, and they trust us to, to collect that patient feedback. And look, I think the, these, these hospital groups are also fairly commercially astute. Um, so they're looking to, to, to grow their practice as a as an umbrella organization so there's a reason why they're they're using dr fi and, and megan manages many of the relationships that we have with them apologies if you hear a few screams in the background i've got a two and a three-year-old and it's approaching bedtime so uh apologies um okay so why do people use us so whenever we speak to a, a consultant what we typically think um and what we typically ask them is to identify with or one or two or three or all of these um in terms of why does somebody use Doctify? So a lot of the people we're speaking to at the moment, and I think it comes down to, it could be a, a cost of living crisis in terms of you know, having to send kids to nursery. It could be having to pay, pay a mortgage with an increased interest rate. Is looking to get into that private practice and looking to grow that private practice. And, and we now know that 90% of patients are, are searching for reviews online before they're choosing a, a, a medical or healthcare provider, which is you know, really fortunate that we've been in that space as that trend has continued because I think that that percentage was something like 25 percent 10 years ago so you know, call it right place right time but there's a real um, increase in demand from from patients to uh, to, to 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 read reviews and in, in the same way that you read reviews on on anything that you you take a decision on um, so that's well one element of it the second element is to to reach target patients so look we know that 33 percent of um of patients within the private market are now self-pay. They have more choice than ever. Um, if you want to help to ensure that they're getting coming to to you as a as a consultant to ensure that, or it could be from a from an insurance standpoint, exactly the same. I'll touch base on on the insurance providers that we we partner with as well. Um, so it's really enabling you to kind of stand out from the crowd and to to reach those target patients. To and it, a lot of the time we speak to a consultant, it might be. Um, an orthopedic surgeon and, and they want to specialize in one specific expertise collecting reviews but for specific treatments enables us to grow that um, practice strengthening your reputation um, look by the end of a year most consultants 53 is the average number of reviews that someone's collected um, so having 53 reviews online pieces of feedback from real patients really does enable you to strengthen your reputation um, and we're very fortunate to have a very strong search engine optimization because we're collecting continual original feedback and then enhancing patient experience this is something that not a lot of people kind of think of doctify um as but actually if, if you think about it in if i think about my my role at doctify continually collect feedback from from my team from my management and from from when we speak to to customers um, about you know what we could have done better as a as a team or what we can do better so enhancing patient experience collecting feedback understanding small things that might make a difference for in the future really really important to do um, so and I don't know hopefully you kind of identify with with one or all of them um, but that's kind of where we see a lot of uh, a lot of consultants kind of deciding actually this is the right thing for me so. What I'll do is I'll, I'll stop sharing that screen. I'm going to skip to a slightly different screen. Um, see if I can just share my window. Actually, um, hopefully you can uh, you can see this. Um, so everything that we do is focused on is focused on feedback. It's focused on reviews. So what we want to enable consultants to do is to collect a, a really high volume of reviews and I'll show you why we want to collect a high volume of reviews because there is a correlation between the number of reviews and the number of page views number of inquiries that come through Doctify so we can get this review link in front of people via an app via um, business cards uh, via automation through a practice management software we 
kind of partner with the majority of them out there. And then what we want is the the patient to kind of go through really simple journey, overall experience, bedside manner, explanation. We want to give some, we want to make sure that there's actually some some context um, to it. And and I'll sh I'll show you why that's the case shortly, but I won't, I'll just keep this one simple and just write great experience here. I'll click next. And this is really the, the key thing to, to what we do is what's this kind of established us as someone different in the market. It's uh, something that, that we're really, really proud of. And it's something that hopefully um, you, you see the value of as well is if you have a, a specialty, be it <clears throat> whatever it might be. But if I think sinus surgery, for instance, um, for Mr. Hughes here, if you're collecting 50 pieces of feedback for sinus surgery, you're going to attract patients for sinus surgery. If you're collecting <clears throat> feedback for nasal polyps, you're going to attract patients for who are looking for um, a consultant for, for nasal polyps. And I'll show you how that works very, very shortly. But this tagging system is, is something that's unique to Dr. Vi, and it's something that you know we constantly get feedback on um, in terms of how we help, how we're helping consultants reach those, as I say, those target patients. So I click next. Everything is verified. This is not an, an open platform. Um, this is not me going to Mr. Hughes and, and just leaving a review like you would on on a trust pilot. Anyone can leave a review on that. Anyone can leave a review on Google. We want to collect a high volume of verified feedback. Um, and that's why we do it through through a mobile phone number. Um, we send a few text messages and then we delete that mobile phone number. So from a GDPR standpoint, from a HIPAA standpoint, completely compliant. And then I hit submit. So that's the review journey. Honestly, it's optimized for mobile because majority of people will leave a review, review on mobile. Um, <clears throat> hopefully you see very, very straightforward. OK, so that's how we collect reviews. We want to enable you to collect reviews in the, the simplest way possible and to collect a high volume. And then what do we actually do with reviews? So I've got Dr. Dr. Bihar, Bihar here. Um, what we want to do is to enable to have one central location for your for your entire practice. So. Dr. B has very um, astute with his marketing, but you can see within his Doctify business panel, he's within the Google business panel, he's got his Doctify reviews there, five out of five. And if I scroll down, I've got his Doctify profile here. Because we've got verified reviews, we're able to have those five star, the five star rating underneath the profile. And I guess if you kind of think about it as a patient, I've, and I, the reason why I joined Doctify was, through personal experience when when we were looking for a, for a consultant for for a child that uh, you, you as a parent or as a loved one you want to be able to read who you're going to take your child to or who you're going to for something that's incredibly serious to to you and eventually you, you know you're spending money on it so being able to to read 131 reviews or see okay doc, dr br here's got 131 reviews he's a cardiologist um in london I'm going to click on him instantly. And what I can see here is his entire practice. So if you have a website, we have stuff that kind of links in with your website and we can increase the conversion of your website. If you don't have a website, this acts as a website. So even from the very start here, really really nice introduction that, that he's given himself and this is this is this is absolutely not um mandatory the the video stuff but it, it it's quite a nice thing to see um and i'll run you through the whole thing but the patient journey what tends to happen and we, we have something called hot jar which tracks what happens on a website is i go on here and i think okay what do i need i've got a my pronunciation isn't great but irregular hearts ir arrhythmia arrhythmia 44 reviews if I'm looking for for somebody to treat that and I'm a, I'm able to read these reviews have been outstanding right from the initial consultation and it's for the specific treatment that I'm looking for. I click that I read that and I click get in touch choose where I want to be where I want to be treated and, uh, and Bob's your uncle I'm away. Now that's the patient journey but what else do we kind of have here is the about section so and not, lots of information about about the consultant, areas of expertise based on the tags that the actual consultant has collected feedback on, subspecialties, conditions and treatments, obviously the GMC qualifications, consultant fees, insurers, 
locations. So as I say, this is really like a central location for everything um, regarding your, your practice. And, and I should say as well, we get a lot of people who are just thinking about starting private practice and they want to kind of get a bit of a head start. You can collect feedback from your NHS patients and, and I can show you various bit if, you, if people are interested I can show people the um the app which you know or you could we have an app where you can actually if you have an iPad or not even an iPad just a, a tablet you can just download it and they can leave feedback there and then we've got a peer endorsements feature um when speaking to patients yeah 100% feedback from um from patients was from other patients was equally important but but to see that someone is 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 kind of well well thought of within within an industry within a medical within the kind of your medical peers um is is again another almost like a, a secondary piece of backup to actually say okay i've read the read the feedback it looks like a great a great consultant actually wow mr Tarek, who's an ophthalmologist has said yeah he's a great cardiologist so that's it, it, as someone who has no knowledge of the medical sphere or medical industry i'm just worried about my own who am I going to go see? It's amazing to be able to, to go do that. And whenever someone comes across your name, the reality is the first thing they're going to do is Google you. Um, we've got this media media center here as well. Um, relatively new new piece. And it's something that kind of goes to, yeah, we want to act as, 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 as your website, as your, that sole piece of information. So you can put any information you want on here. We've also got a, a piece coming, which is if you've done any, had anything published or anything like that, you're going to be able to put that on there as well. Um, you can see loads of different videos on there, kind of link it to YouTube, whatever um, you want to go with. If you do have socials, you can just slap them on there um, and people will click them um, and then FAQs as well. So that's kind of how, what the, what the, what, what everything looks like from a, a patient facing standpoint. I'm not going to spend too much time on going on the internal stuff. Um, what I will say is we have a kind of a separate survey feature. We have a video consultation feature um, and all, everything that happens on your feedback on your profile is tracked. So you can check, okay, how many people are actually viewing my profile? How many people are clicking, getting in touch? Um, and, and all of that stuff. Um, I'll just come back to this to this slide deck really quickly and just kind of show you what that means. So this is for an individual consultant. This is taken over an average. Someone with no reviews will collect, will have like 19 page views um, and two inquiries. Someone with 50 reviews, thousand page views on average, 232 inquiries. Someone with 250 plus reviews will have three and a half thousand page views and, and 621 inquiries through Doctify. Um, so hopefully this this shows people the value of, of reviews in, in the society that we that we live in uh, at the moment. And it, it's just something that I think is really, really I just don't think it's going away. It's not it's not going backwards. It's only going to become more important. And uh, some people will say it's not. But I, you just can't really argue with the with the way that we're moving into a much more digital era. Um, how we work with um, with the hospital is all of the kind of consultant um, profiles that someone's on, they can actually go in and click on on the reviews, and this will take them to the Doctify website. So um, Dr. Diaz here, for instance, is a, signed up with Doctify. He's got fifty six patient reviews, two and a half thousand page views, three hundred and fifteen inquiries. So kind of just shows you what it looks like and then we've got this is a, an example of a widget that if you've got a website we can absolutely put it on your website really straightforward to do various different designs um, but just kind of showing you how we are integrating everything with the hospital um, at, at the moment and hopefully by having the the Doctify feedback on there it should also increase the aim anyway is to increase the um, the, the word has just completely gone from me, but should it hopefully increase inquiries through through that channel as well. Um, it's put up, put on there. It, we've got an, an agreement with, with 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 the hospital. It's usually ninety nine pounds per month. Um, at the moment it's it's seventy nine pounds per month. So you know if you are interested, you, you're absolutely welcome to email myself or Megan, um, and, and we can absolutely get stuff set up, or we can talk about it in. Uh, in more detail as well um but um 
that I feel like was a, a complete whirlwind, um, but hopefully gives you like a bit of an indication as to um, as, as to Dr. Fi high level of, of what we do. And, and if anyone's got any questions, obviously I am I'm more than happy to uh, to answer them. I'll stop sharing. Thank you, James. Um, just just one of the bits that we found really useful was to. <clears throat> In a sort of competitive world, is to to stand out um, and get our clinicians to stand out against their um, competitors. So, in particular, when we were launching our private GP service, having a lot of our GP recorded activity. I mean, our second highest uh, person that's reviewed is 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 one of our private GPs. Um, but what it allowed us to do is if someone then searches for a particular service within Sutton Coalfield, for example, patients can benchmark um, reviews of different competing organisations. And you didn't touch on that within the, the, the presentation, but it's it's a really useful feature from a patient point of view um, to, to, to actually look at, you know, when Ultimately, they're deciding between a group of clinicians and, you know, the more information they have on that group of clinicians, the, 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 the better. Uh, and it's it's trying to get people to to almost know who they're going to see before they actually see them. And we found that that was the big advantage for for, for us on on sort of engaging with 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 Dr. Fire. And we are similarly seeing a, a, a number of inquiries growing exponentially. But I just wonder if there's a, a possibility to just show that that feature yes bear with me two seconds um so if i just do this oh, one so let me just reshare my my screen uh dum, dum, dum. <laughs> Condiologist, I've got it. I've, I've kind of typed it wrong, but um, hopefully you can see here. So I've just typed in best cardiologist um, in, in in Birmingham, and, and what it's going to do is just take me through to the to the Doctor Fire website. And I'm not on mute. Thank you. Oh, good. Um, just take me through to the to the Doctor Fire website. So this enables me as a as a patient to actually look at all of the different kind of cardiologists within within the area we can look at what they've been recommended for most of the time the number of different patient reviews the number of endorsements that they've got um and then i can i can kind of click on here so so dr mahmoud um and we mentioned that atrial fibrillation he's kind of collected five pieces of feedback for that um and then i can kind of go and go and read that but yeah look i think you're absolutely right um ben i think it's being able to as a patient almost know your can not know your consultant but at least have some understanding as to even rec facial recognition kind of what what that person looks like and you know video what that person sounds like really enables them to to make the best decision for their for their own care um and it enables them i guess to feel less anxious um about potentially making Go, going to see a, a consultant that they might be you know slightly worried about if they've you know, you've never seen them never heard about them um in 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 the past just just being able to read about them being able to read about other patients experiences for for the exact same care or treatment i think is is something that for patients is something that well, from what we hear and you know we speak to kind of a lot of patients a lot of consultants a lot of a lot of hospital um, kind of managers, and and it's something that kind of comes back again and again. Is yeah, this is this is great from a commercial standpoint, and I've really touched on it from a you know how it's going to help you as, as as consultants, but from a patient standpoint, and this is where we originally started. That you know the the two people who started Doctor Fi, I've worked with them. I've I've worked in. Um, I guess fairly commercial roles for the last 15 years they're the two least commercial people you're ever going to you're ever going to meet they want to make the world a better place by making sure that patients connect with the right doctor can find the right doctor for it could be a rare disease it could whatever it may be um and that's really the whole 
mission of Dr. Fi. Now, I'll be honest, the, the commercial stuff has been kind of born out of that. Um, but you're, you're absolutely right in terms of saying that from a from a patient standpoint, being able to, to Google that and, and, and come up with the the clarification as to the best person to treat them through 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 coming up and reading about them, I think is, is really important. It's perfect. Thank, thank you. Um, I, I guess does does anyone have any any questions or any questions about um, to to any of the people that have um, given given their their time this evening? No. Okay. Perfect. So, uh, thank you all for for attending. Um, I'll I'll share the recording as well. So uh, you know to 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 how we're note taking and everything. Um, and uh, yep, yeah, any any queries, feel free to get in touch with me, and I can direct them to the to the relevant people as well. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ben. Great stuff. Thank you. Thank you.